560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Insert Democrat Socialist here. Runs the Democratic House law for 30 plus years of running. He's promising this and he's stealing that. Where can you get that kind of money? He's using your house like his own piggy bank, gang, 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 gang. You ought to know by now. You can pay off your house here in Illinois, but you can never keep up with the taxes. Oh, how it's always been the plan To have a taxpayer pay, no doubt Not a matter of if anymore but when You're moving out I said, when you're moving out Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. That theme music means it's time for our weekly conversation with Ted Dabrowski, president of wirepoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. But before we get to Ted, let's go back to Rocky. We, uh... Poured over comments made by Blackhawks owner Rocky Wirtz on Neil Cavuto's show on Fox Business about the incoming mayor and uh, particularly on the issues of crime and taxes. Uh, Here's Rocky Wirtz, leading city businessman, of course, on taxes and what he hopes for from BLM Brandon. Well, I think it, again, it's it's how you're gonna how you're gonna do it. I mean, we have uh, pensions that we have to deal with too, and uh, so I, I know we pay plenty of taxes ourselves for our our businesses. But I think it's again we have to work together. And how you put those taxes are, and what you do, and wh- and who you're taxing it is all different. I mean, you have to make sure that everyone works together. Taxes have to be equal for everyone, not just for a few. And I think if we can find a way to do that, I think it would be a good step in the right direction. Uh, Chicago has one of the highest entertainment taxes in the country, at 12 percent for sports off the top. So it's uh, so we have to make it you know worthwhile for those fans to come in. But uh, you know you can't t- tax your way to uh, prosperity, and it's something that's always very concerning to us because the price of the tickets are the price of the tickets. But you put 12 percent on top of that, it gets to be very expensive. Indeed. Uh, you can't tax your way to prosperity, but it doesn't mean there won't be politicians who try. Uh, we need to tax everyone equally, but please don't increase the entertainment tax on Blackhawks tickets. Is that what I was hearing? Yeah, he's, he sounds desperate and just, you know, as if a gun is pointed to his head. Uh, well, uh, Brandon Johnson has said, uh, look, the we're, we're, way we're going to pay for all the spending that I want to do is the people that have the means are going to have to pay more, pay their fair share. More so. corporate, raising corporate taxes, even though Chicago has the third highest corporate taxes in the country and transition or transaction taxes. Governor Pritzker asked him, you know, please, that'll ruin businesses, drive businesses out of Chicago. No, Brandon Johnson's not budging. He doesn't care. Yeah, well, yeah, Governor Pritzker's the wrong messenger, but um, uh, and a, 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 a false messenger at that considering he tried to graduate the state state's income tax Mm -hmm. Uh, but the the thing too it's just the whole tax we we need to work together tax everyone equally i mean those are nice sounding phrases how how does that how does that play out operationally because brandon johnson says the same thing i need to work together uh, agree to disagree so on and so forth so how does that work rocky we'll uh, work together so long as he doesn't increase the entertainment tax but he what goes after the exchanges or he institutes a corporate tax on people making more than a hundred grand or more than a million or int- introduces a, a transfer tax and homes worth more than a million. Well, there won't be very many of those for long. I just, I, I this, this, this sort of uh, Chicago business person patter, uh, you know, I, I need it distilled. I need people to start speaking a little bit more plainly, Otherwise, or I could just interpret it for you because we've been hearing it for 40 years, so I know what it means. For more on this, Ted Dabrowski joins us. Ted, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Amy. Yeah, uh, Daniel, this, you, issue, this issue yeah. you're talking about has been bothering you know, us for a long time, and, and we've, we've written about it. I think you know, we've talked about it in the past that the, that the corporate elite, you know, they're, they're, they're super powerful in Chicago. You're talking about some of the the most high-profile, smart, wealthy, uh, successful people, and yet they have never been willing to take on 
and, you know, and, and maybe for good reason, for bad reason, but um, never been able to take on the system, and, and they refuse to. And, and you could be you, you can be skeptical and say, well, that's because they benefited from the system too much. That's one way to do it. The others have been that they've been too scared, so they've been just appeasers. And uh, you know, for the most part, they appease, they appease, they appease. And every time you appease, well, you know, you get taken advantage of. And, and uh, every politician here in Illinois knows that. Uh, nobody's allowed to speak up. If you speak up, you're not invited to the you know, to the important parties and uh, <laughs> Chicago mayor, you mm-hmm. know, functions and all that, you get ostracized and nobody wants to be ostracized. So everybody plays the game and they're still playing the game. So here we go. And we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're circling. Yeah, they well, want to be invited to the NASCAR race downtown. It's going to close down the city for a month. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, you know, you want to, you want to be, if you're somebody, you want to be part of those things. And uh, mm-hmm. that, that's what they're worried about. Yeah, well, it's um, it's a funny thing. Um, they're going to find out, um, much like some of the financiers of the Jacobins during the French Revolution found out, that just because you were a financier doesn't mean we, you won't go to the gallows or the guillotine, as the case may be. And the the interesting thing is they used to have a seat at the table. People used to care, even up through Lori Lightfoot, people used to care what the economic club had to say, what Rocky Wirtz or Ken Griffin or Chris Kebzinski had to say. But here's the new reality. Actually, they don't matter. Actually, they don't hold the kind of sway on the city, the city's power structure, political power structure that they used to hold because they've been backing the wrong horses and um, frankly, Brandon Johnson and Kim Fox and Tony Prenkwinkel have proved they don't need Rocky Wirtz and others. I it's you know I, I think all you need to do is hear what Brandon Johnson said the other day, right? Uh, I think he was on national TV, but he said that um, you know, the, the poverty and violence in the city were caused by large corporations not paying enough in taxes. Yeah, and you know he went on from from that all the way to. It's large corporations that are effectively at fault for for the for the pain and, and problems of, of wind, the windy city. Uh, man, if, if 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 Rocky Wirtz and others don't hear that and and say we need a new strategy on how we're doing this, then uh, then they never will. And I, I'll tell you, you, know, you were asking earlier on the show what what should he be doing? It's what anybody would do. Like if you have a a job that you you don't like your boss or he's not promoting you or you're being successful but you're not getting proper treatment. Well, what you do before you go talk to your boss is you go out and get three other offers, make sure you line them up, and then you go talk to your boss and say, if I don't get this, this, and this, I'm out. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what, like, you know, what Rocky Wirtz and others are doing. They're trying to figure out, you know, plan A. And, and if they can't get something from Brandon Johnson or if they see that he's going to continue on the path that he's said he will continue on, you know, expect a lot of people to leave. Um, you and uh, your colleague, John Klinger, over at uh, Wirepoints uh, have updated the uh, data on the incidents of major crimes year over year. Uh, what does it tell us about where the city is at in the final days of uh, Lori Lightfoot and thus the challenges ahead for those who are going to stay and live under Brandon Johnson? Well, you know, here's what's, what's fa- fascinating to me is that, you know, if Lori Lightfoot had w- wanted to win that election, she could have done all kinds of things just to go sort of as hell, tamp down on crime and make the numbers, whatever, stay flat. You know, whatever she had to do to maneuver the numbers and manage them. You know, and she didn't. What's fascinating is that crime is up 46 percent this year over the same time last year. You know, and we were complaining about how bad it was last year. And here we are, 46 percent more. Um, so, you know, that's what we're walking into. And, and Brandon Johnson is taking over this thing. It's, it's a failure. But he's going to double down and triple down or whatever you want to say on, on, you know, what life would fail to do. You know, he's not going to incarcerate more. He's not going to arrest more. He's not going to uh, force Fox or push Fox to prosecute more or Evans to sentence more. So, you know, you can only be negative about these things. It's, it's, it's impossible to be, you know, cautiously optimistic because that's that's a fool's game. And um, just thinking about how this radiates out into the suburbs um, and how the suburbs no longer radiate into the city. So, I mean, it sort of goes in both directions. The problems in Chicago will be visited, particularly in the ring suburbs around the city. 
um, but also the problems in the city will uh, dissuade suburbanites from coming down and spending their money. And so now you're talking about uh, some of the features of urban living, restaurants and entertainment. Uh, it's hard to see how they don't suffer under the weight of fewer customers and higher taxes. Well, yeah, you've got you got the problem of the uh, empty buildings. You've got the problem of you know people not coming down. I you know now it might be you know a, a bias of who I hang out with, but people are really scared to go into the city. Uh, they're cautious. They go in less. Um, they're certainly scared to take the L. All that stuff has to add up over time. And um, you know, right now there's still there's still some COVID money left over. There's still the inflationary aspect of what's going on for Chicago. Uh, and, and that'll last a bit. But, uh, you know, when you're talking about, you know, at its peak, we were having 100 motor vehicle thefts a day. Um, you know, that's massive. You're talking about five uh, carjackings a day. So, you know, the, those those points of risk at any time were, were, were rising. And, you know, you, you hope that they, you know, sadly, you hope that they don't spread outside Chicago into the into the suburbs. But uh, that whole combination can't spell good things for Chicago. And, and uh, you, you can't help but be concerned about about real estate values. Um, you know, we haven't even talked about schools, right? Schools, you know, in, 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 in his view on, on, on education and all that, add all these things up and you better, you better be concerned. Well, I mean, it's he's kind of not going to raise property taxes because that's a lazy way of doing taxation, he said. But, of course, he doesn't need to do that. He's going to, to uh, have uh, his friends at CPS do that for him the way that previous mayors have. I mean, he's not the first one to... to to do this if he does it. And that's clearly he's indicating what he is because, you know, you may not raise property taxes, but uh, 80% of property taxes right now go to pay the force, go into the four city pension funds, which are combined less than 25% funded. They're death spiraling. And he's getting and, a teacher's pension. Uh, and you got a teacher's contract coming up next year. That should be a real rigorous negotiation. So, um, mm. so yeah, so the, the money will continue to flow to CPS from, from from state coffers, so everybody paying, and from local coffers through property taxation, and um, uh, and those people who think they're in some enclave and their kids are going to some elite school, I I, I wouldn't be too comfortable about that situation uh, staying the way it is now either. Yeah, I mean, two two comments on that. The first is. You know, he says he doesn't want to raise property taxes, but you know, if he wants real money, I think he's going to have a hard time. You know, for those things that the legislature needs to agree to, he's going to have a hard time getting them to agree to it. Maybe they will, but I think he'll have a hard time. So, uh, you know, it'll come around that the, the only place where he can get real money is, is property taxes. So, watch. Let's see. Let's see if he can. Let's see where that ends up because he may have to come to property taxes and say, "Sorry, but we need the money." Um, the other part that I think is 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 so important is you know we're, we're highly critical of. Chicago public schools at wire points because you know we've looked at the numbers across the board. You know, the only the only good thing there are these magnet schools where you know you have black, brown, white kids succeeding. They do really well. Um, you know, but Brandon Johnson taught at one of those. And if anybody hasn't seen his video of him talking about that when he sat alongside Bill Ayers, you know, he basically said that he was at a real conflict in working at at at, uh, at uh, Westinghouse was the school, mm -hmm. and because you know. They, they did better than the other kids, and, and he didn't think that was fair. And so he said he started testing less, trying to remove standards. Oh, uh, no he, he homework. Didn't no homework. I mean, that's a scary message. You know, the fact that he even got elected is scary enough on its own. But, but for, for that message to be out there, and, and, and probably a lot of parents have no idea he said that, but if they were to hear it, they should be fearful for their, you know, for whatever good education their kids are getting in some of those great schools. Well, I tweeted it out when I used to have a Twitter. But is anybody can can anybody stop him? I mean, with this progressive agenda, with you know a hotel tax increase. I mean, is there anybody on the city council that can say, you know, slow your roll, buddy? No, I, I think you know they, he, he continues on. They're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's the new mayor. He's got his new ideas. Uh, they're going to let him have it. And uh, you know, only then might we see what what a wreck it is. But uh, I think I think the train's rolling right now, and we just have to you know watch it play out. And then you know, as I've said, you know, people criticize me for being hopeful. Is that at some point it becomes so crazy that even the center left will want 
change at some point. But uh, mm-hmm. the question is, will the city be too damaged at that point for, for the change to matter? What's uh, the prognosis for the suburbs? I, I, I know uh, that everybody was talking about the hot suburban housing market uh, during COVID when people were fleeing uh, urban centers and going to places with less density and so forth. And now you're hearing some of the same things. Oh, we'll flee to the suburbs or I'm in the suburbs and I'm going to my uh, home values are going to benefit from the flight out of the city to the suburbs, at least as a intermediate step. Uh, even if that's true in pockets, how long do you think it lasts? Yeah, you know, I mean, it could, it could last for a few years, right? Because we're still, you know, the fifth largest, the sixth largest state now. We're still a massive part of the economy. You know, whatever we whatever we say of Chicago, it's still it's still a massive economic engine. So, you know, it's it's hard to think about how this thing slows down over time. But it's it's really an atrophy over time, and and the suburbs will be part of it. Uh, you know, they'll they'll maybe they'll benefit at first from people moving out and still wanting to stay in Illinois because their jobs are here, and places like, you know, the, the nearby suburbs will do well. But uh, you know, over time, it's that negative drip, and you know, you can't help but just look at the positives of Florida. And Tennessee and Carolinas, and you know that's where the growth is. And, and anybody who's looking for for growth and and excitement and jobs, that's where it is. So, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had a more positive story to tell about um, Illinois and Chicago. But I'd be being dishonest if I were optimistic. He is Ted Dabrowski, President of WirePoints, WirePoints.org, all things Illinois policy related. Thanks as always, Ted. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and he joined us on our Turnkey Pro Answer Line. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you'll know. This is Chicago's Morning Answer. Morning Answer on AM five sixty. The Answer. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart. Every year, more than four million pets enter shelters here in the United States. My friends at American Humane have been helping animals since eighteen seventy seven. The goal is to ensure that pets have a safe shelter, especially during natural disasters. Adopting a shelter pet allows shelters to help more animals awaiting care. Please consider adopting today and take some time to learn more about American Humane's other work at AmericanHumane.org. The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and 10 times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 